hey guys welcome back to my channel how have you been doing i know i had been gone for some time now but more on that later in the video today it's back to another sketchbook study one themed around the pumpkin carving season it's the fall season in many parts of the world with the leaves changing color the holiday season approaching and everyone gearing up for a cozy winter I thought to share a short process video of a pumpkin carving in gouache. If you do enjoy this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. It does help me out a lot and bring out more content for you. Now back to the painting. I start off by sketching the carved pumpkin, making sure I have the correct ratios of the eyes to the nose and the mouth. As I will be painting this in gouache, I am comfortable using a rather detailed approach in my sketch work. If I were to do the same in watercolors, I would have used a very light hand as graphite usually peeks through from watercolors. While sketching, I do make note of the various crevices on the pumpkin surface so that it gives me an idea on where to put the shadows and lights. Coming to the art supplies, I chose a mix of Princeton Aqua Elite brushes and Bruce Strode detailing brushes, gouache paints from Magello Mission White Glass, my trusty old mixing palette that has a clasp which keeps my gouache wet for a long period of time. I also chose the paints based on a color chart that I prepare as soon as I get a new set of colors. Gouache can look completely different when dry and making these color charts definitely helps me with a quick reference. I will have all these supplies listed in the description box below for you to check out. Now coming to the fun part, I am going in with a flat wash all across the pumpkin. This will form the base color. The paint that I am using here closely resembles cadmium yellow. Here I am using a half inch angled brush from Princeton. This helps me cover more area within a short span of time. There's nothing complex here. Gouache is an opaque medium, so you need not be extra careful around the edges. There will always be time for you to go back and correct your mistakes. Now on to the next layer. I used a combination of a bright orange red, a light red and burnt sienna to create the various shades on the surface. The colors are darker closer to the crevices and become lighter as they move away. To make the pumpkins look realistic, I never put a flat wash in the subsequent layers. This will also help the base color that we have put earlier to peek through. The next few minutes you will see me going through the same process over and over again to build depth and show texture on the pumpkin surface. Now, like I promised at the start of the video, I'll give you an update on why I was missing out on my upload schedule here on YouTube. I live in the southern half of India and we have had a couple of months where we had a long season of downpour. Unfortunately, I was the victim of a mosquito borne disease to that extent that I had to be hospitalized and it took me a good 15-20 days to regain my strength. It was a scary experience to the extent that my parents had flown in to help me through that time. But I'm thankful that the worst is over. So yeah, now I am back 
and I'm grateful to each one of you to stick around with me. This was also the time that I hit 100 subscribers. I could not be more humbled. I mean, 100 people watch my videos, they like my content, and they have subscribed to my channel. Your continued support and love is what keeps me going. So thank you so very much. And now moving on to the third layer of the painting. Here I concentrate on getting more depths and textures around the crevices. The colors become more dark, muted, brown as we move to the areas where the light doesn't hit the surface. I go back to the areas where I think I have to darken and I go about a stippling motion so that the layers underneath are still visible. As you can see, the process is quite repetitive. I go back with more saturated colors and keep adding it to create more textures. Now to paint the stalk of the pumpkin, I use a combination of black, dark brown and a mixture of light red with white. I wanted to go for a very jagged structure for the stalk. And now to add the highlights on the pumpkin. In this illustration, the light source is coming from the top left. 
so most of the highlights are towards the left of the pumpkin. The highlight is a combination of white and lemon yellow. Depending on the intensity of the highlight, these two colors are used in varying proportions. Again, I am not using a flat wash here, but rather a stippling motion to enhance the textures of the pumpkin. You will also notice me go back to redo the highlights of the pumpkin because as the colors dried, it did not show up as vibrant as I hoped for. Now the exterior of the pumpkin looks good to me so I go back to grab some more lemon yellow and start painting the insides, the cavity of the pumpkin. To denote the depth, I am using cadmium yellow on the outer periphery and aiming to get a seamless blend between the lemon yellow at the very inner limits of the cavity. It's best to use a fine detailing brush here to get the sharp edges. As you can see, mixing the cadmium yellow with the lemon yellow gives a sense of depth inside the cavity of the pumpkin. Now to achieve the brightness of the light that is coming from the inside of the pumpkin, I mix a combination of white and lemon yellow and I concentrate this in the areas that are to the extreme inside of the pumpkin. So as you can see there is a gradation from whitish yellow to a lemon yellow to a cadmium yellow mix. I am now making some final adjustments to the exterior of the pumpkin, sharpening the cutouts while still retaining the organic feel of a carved pumpkin. Now you can very well stop painting here, but I want to give a dark background so that the glow becomes even more intense. So here I am using a shadow violet or a dark Prussian color as the background. Here I went back to my half inch angular brush because again I am intending to cover a larger area. As you are going to see in a couple of minutes that the addition of this dark background immediately changes the intensity and the vibrancy of the glow that is coming from the inside of the pumpkin. 
and I was glad that I was able to get this effect. I again go back to a fine liner brush because I didn't want to ruin the edges of the pumpkin and uh, a couple of splashes around the dark background and that's pretty much it. So this was the carved pumpkin tutorial. I hope you liked the tutorial and I would be really looking forward to your rendition of the same. If you really like this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye.